All right, folks, tune in the engine. I'm going to start with all the stuff I did to increase power. Then I'm going to talk about some supporting modifications and maybe what I would have done differently. Starting right at the beginning, I've got these two large cone filters that sit forward of the radiator. So it's feeding from nice cold air. That goes through two very large amateur pipes that go to the throttle body, which comes to the first sort of bit of work I did here. So I enlarged this throttle body. In terms of cross-sectional area, it was an 11% increase. I used to work at a college uh, and they did it on a milling machine. So we've got a nice um, bore here. You can see the difference between the one that has been done and the one that has yet to be done. But of course, the next big thing you've got to do is make a large throttle plate the two throttle plates so i had this large bit of bar from work and uh, one of the engineers there uh, put a bit of a slope on it i forget exactly maybe it was like six degrees or something they were when the butterfly shut they don't shut completely so you have to make a parallelogram so this bar is able to put in the lathe by some plates of brass and turn them down to exactly the right size so i guess you can imagine in the lathe it's wobbling around because it's not quite a flat end on that bar so that made two perfectly fitting butterflies and there you go i've enlarged the two throttle bodies so from the throttle body into the plenum, I matched those and grind them all out from the plenum down to the inlet runners and uh, match those so there's a smooth airflow. And then below, th below the runners where the injectors mount, there's this plastic section. Again, the six inlet runners go through that plastic section. Now they had enormous restrictions in them, I assume to introduce turbulence or to detune the engine or something. So I took those out. So they match the profile of the runners. I think that was one of the real big ones, actually. This was probably quite a pinch point for performance. Uh, so those helped a lot. And then below that, I've ported the inlet port of the cylinder head, all 12 of them. Uh, not too much came out of there. It was just smoothing the castings and um, just a bit of tidying up, really. The exhaust ports, you can see here, it had this air injection system, which gets the cat warm very quickly from cold start, which I didn't need any of that. Uh, but you can see it's backwards air injection. So there's this little tube in the center in it pushes air backwards against the flow into the exhaust. So I could take a huge amount of material out of those exhaust ports. Um, so that that was a real big impact again, I think, uh, on the performance of the engine. So from there, I made these exhaust manifolds. I did some calculations using, I forget his name now, but a friend of mine put me onto this book. Uh, and there is a website where you can do online calculations for the optimum diameter and length of your primary pipes. So you can see here I've got three primary pipes collecting into one. So I went one and a half inch into two and a half inch on each side, which obviously the two and a half inch is probably a bit overkill. Uh, but I think the one and a half inch, 27 inch primaries were perfect for the engine uh, displacement and peak RPM and so on. So I think they were tuned for about 6,200 RPM um, and the engine can rev just a little bit more than that. I think those have had a big impact. So it's the exhaust porting. Uh, it's the injector base plate thing where I took a lot of material like the plastic and then I think these headers I reckon those are the real big ones that made the big difference here you can see I got these plates from uh, of, of eBay I think for an X30XE they're 10 millimeter stainless steel three or four I think they are um, plates which bolt on each side of the engine two of them and then I used actually the old exhaust system from the scimitar which was one and a half inch pipes on each side and I put those in make sure they were 27 inch long and then I cut these five degrees at a time or something like that um, with a little template. You can see I cut a tiny bit of material out. I bent the steel and then I made sure there was um, no burrs inside and then I welded it up. So here's a nearly finished item. And you can see mostly I've got fairly decent radiuses in there, uh, albeit in, in little increments. Uh, but the proof's in the pudding. The thing makes so much power. Um, and it was the only way I could do it, no pipe bender, and I was on a very tight budget back then. I've got some heat shields, I, I tacked a few heat shields on those, which I think this one protects the starter motor, uh, and then there's some heat shields I made to go over the exhaust, and some splash guards, sorry, so they don't get hosed with road water. From there back I've got two straight through silencers and two and a half inch pipes all the way back, and it's far too loud, but of course for performance is absolutely spot on. It's not just that these headers are very good in in, um, in their performance but what was there before was particularly terrible it was two cast iron log manifolds that went along the side of the head in addition to that there was four catalytic converters two per side so this was a very restrictive exhaust system so I, I don't wish to profess that my headers have made all this power but just getting rid of some of that nasty stuff has obviously freed up a lot of horsepower as well so it went from 211 horsepower to well here's this dyno run from when we had it mapped so you can see from this plot it's between 225 and 230 foot pounds at about 6100 rpm so it's just over 260 horsepower on this particular dyno but the chap who ran this dyno said it's not at all a calibrated machine so i had it on another dyno which said 290 horsepower and once again i'm not sure that was a calibrated machine so 
I say that this car makes about 275 or thereabouts. So that is simple NA tuning. The supporting mods that went along with that, something which helps the engine perform beautifully, is this flywheel. The original dual mass flywheel was 16 kilos, and that's before you put the clutch and a pressure plate on it. Uh, this lightweight one here was just a little over 6 kilos, so really a huge difference in weight. Uh, and that allows the engine to rev um, really very freely, which has a, a great effect on your acceleration in first gear has an effect in second gear, and then less so in third, fourth, and fifth, where the car's weight becomes far more of a factor, and the flywheel far less. With a 16-kilo <clears throat> dual-mass flywheel, you do not need springs in the clutch, but of course, switching to a solid flywheel, you do need springs in your clutch. So I had to find a clutch with springs in it, and you can see it here. Now, you can see the diameter is a fraction smaller, and that clutch subsequently has lasted about 15,000 miles. But I have now found the big one, like the one, like the solid clutch here, same diameter but with springs in it. So we're absolutely golden there. All right, here was one more supporting modification. In the top of the engine block, there was an oil cooler. Uh, so I removed that. It was an oil to water cooler. I removed that and put a big 19 row cooler on the uh, at the front and put a thermostat, uh, an oil thermostat, in the car as well, so that, that would not flow to the cooler until the engine was warm. Um, in hindsight, I don't know whether that was necessary. Really, the engine oil to water cooler would be probably pretty effective. But I have hammered this thing around track for hours at a time. Um, so perhaps the cooling would be better at that point. So I made this plate here to cover up the top of the engine block. So that's just a water gallery in there now. Uh, and there is no oil cooler in there. Uh, that is it for supporting mods. In terms of further tuning, I could have put some hot cams in there. Uh, I could have, well, yeah, put a really racy cam in and, and that would have raised it up the rev range a little bit. But you get a lot of, I personally I think, for this particular car, a road car for track days and having fun on the road, uh, it comes at a bit of a cost. You Obviously, there's a financial cost, a massive one. Uh, you need four camshafts for a kickoff. And really, if you're raising the, the torque band up the revs, you need to uh, rev the engine more. So uh, perhaps a balanced crank, some uh, fancy bearings, um, special con rods, maybe even pistons, and then uh, stronger valve springs to keep those from bouncing, uh, putting a bit more stress on the, on, the, on the valve train. Not such a consideration with overhead cams, but it's that's a you, that's a lot of money that would have doubled easily the price of the engine maybe tripled or quadrupled it so yeah you could squeeze some more power out but uh, I also feel like you lose a bit of reliability um, doing that to to think it's done nearly fifteen thousand miles driving to and from track days and and being thrashed around and it's got ample power so I was kind of going down the understressed you know large engine understressed sort of route so that that would be further any tuning but I don't regret not doing any of that really. Um, speaking of stress, yeah, raising the revs puts a lot of stress on rod bearings and um, and uh, the thrust side of the bore and I suppose the valve train, yeah. But you, you raising the compression ratio really puts very little on it. The, the speed of the piston changing direction is a lot to do with um, the stress on an engine and the rev limit. I think is is a lot more important than the actual bang in the cylinder until you get to to boosted engines where you're really raising the uh, the, the work done by the piston and of course an awful lot more heat generated in there as well. So speaking of uh, compression ratios, uh, that is one of my regrets. I think um, up in that compression ratio, I think it's 10.8 as standard, maybe up to 11.5 or something like that would have been uh, would have been really good. Uh, the beauty of uh, compression ratio, y y within sensible uh, limits anyway, is that you get really you get back what you put in. If you put a, another 10% on the compression ratio, you almost get 10% more torque. I mean it might even be actually 10% more torque and you get nearly 10% more efficiency as well. So it's a fantastic thing, it's your best friend and the only reason and OEM doesn't do it is because of uh, nitrous oxide emissions. Uh, it's always been kept low. So that would have been good. And then forced, uh, forced induction, supercharging or turbocharging. Actually, that was my plan. I bought another engine, a 3.2, with, um, with a forged crankshaft in it for supercharging. But uh, I never did it because I decided the car was such a balanced package at that point. Uh, I didn't want to compromise on reliability, of which it seems to be very good. So, um, yeah, it would have meant a new clutch, new, new gearbox entirely. That gearbox wouldn't have coped with extra torque of forced induction. Um, the axle maybe the brakes I mean it's another whole project so yeah I didn't want to get on that route either so uh, really only the compression ratio but I mean it's got a pretty high compression ratio at 10.8 anyway so I'm not uh, it's fine it's fine by me <laughs> it's, it's done very well it just would have meant a head skim or something I suppose I didn't have the money at the time that's it for this video so that is the engine tuning so in the next video I'll just talk briefly I think I'll finish the symmetry in the next video about uh, the, the um, ECU I chose and uh, why I chose it, uh, a little bit of uh, ECU tuning with that one, that'll be a very short video. And then that'll be it for the Scimitar in the previous projects video, I think I've pretty well documented all the stuff I've done now. Uh, I'm ready to move on to the next one really.
Um, so the lander is here with me. You can see <clears throat> I'm trying to get the bulkhead now fitted, got the doors on for alignment and so on. Uh, that is coming soon, but I did want to build a little bit of a, a stash of videos before I start releasing those, hopefully on a weekly, but at least on a fortnightly basis. There's been a big break from that project um, while I've been doing the garden, uh, some work with the garden. So it's on its way. I've maybe got two videos in the bank so far, but I haven't made them yet. So yeah, the next video, then then we're on to a few more previous projects. Maybe I'll inter intertwine them with Land Rover videos, or maybe there'll be a few more of those to come out. Uh, before the Land Rover comes back. Thank you so much, folks. If you've watched this far, I would be most grateful if you um, put the little likey button thing like, um, and maybe leave a comment if you, if you like. If you want to say anything, leaving a comment really helps my channel and, and the like button and the subscribe -y thing. Uh, if you'll do that for me, that'd be great. Thank you so much uh, for all your support. Uh, tune in again.